Yun, may lechon baka, oh. Puni mo na yung kalahati. Kalahating baka, laki nun. Right? He plants suggestions in our mind. That's why we must redirect our focus away from the temptation by conquering evil with good. It says in the Word of God in Romans 12, 21, Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing what? Doing good. Instead of opening the gaming app, open the Bible app. Instead of watching a movie full of inappropriate things, watch a good family movie. Instead of binge-watching a particular series because the hot guy or the hot gal is in it, spend time with your hot spouse instead. (laughs) All right? Praise God. (laughs) Earlier, pastor said, who has Facebook? Nobody raised their hands. That's unbelievable. Nobody raised their hands, right? You see, social media, I wonder why you didn't raise your hands. Social media is good for information, okay? It's good to keep you informed, not to keep chismis, okay? But if you're on it more than you're with God, if you're on it more than with your spouse, if you're on it more than with your family, more than your your church, then there's a problem, Brother of here said he was looking at the statistics. Typically, an American father would spend 10 minutes with their children. That's it. It improved from two minutes in the 1970s. But that's how much time they spend. In the meantime, they can spend all afternoon on Sunday or whatever day watching football, playing golf, doing other things. Our priorities are not right. You see, instead of going on social media all the time, reconnecting with others, you must take out your spouse. Let me say that again. Not take out your spouse. Don't kill her or him. (laughs) Take your spouse out on a stroll or a dinner or reconnect and reconnect with each other. Amen? Amen. (laughs) There's a word, POC. <laughs> MSNBC interviewed an attorney, a lawyer, and this is what he said. Uh, nearly 60% of his divorce cases in the last year alone dealt with Facebook issues. Either if it's, whether it's real or it's just something that they think is happening, it was 60% of his cases. According to American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, more than 80% of divorce attorneys have seen a significant increase in cases involving social media, not just Facebook. When you are on Facebook or any social media, keep it social. Don't post stuff there that should not be posted. It's for information. Hey, we're having a picnic here. That's good. Hey, I'm having a picnic with you, my ex. That's not good. (laughs) Okay? We must fight for our family. Amen? As believers, instead of Facebook, get your face in his book. Instead of Snapchat, chat with God and you will snap up his presence. Instead of being on Vine, be attached to the one true Vine. Instead of YouTube, go on GodTube. Instead of Instagram, be in awe of the great ram, signifying Jesus who sacrificed in our place. Instead of going on kick, kick out the enemy. And the old people are saying, ano yung sinabi ni pastor? <laughs> the youth understands what I'm trying to say here. For couples, instead of funny mate, have fun with your mate. Instead of Twitter, be sweet to her. <laughs> Yan. Instead of Pinterest, find after your spouse and be interested. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm the first one to delete my app. My wife's like, Amen. (laughs) We overcome temptation by identifying the pattern of temptation, shielding your heart, being alert and praying, redirecting your thoughts, and fifth and finally, belong in your church and your life group. The best lie of the enemy is when he says that you are different. You're the only one going through this. You're the only one who's facing this temptation, this struggle, and this sin. Everyone else has it together. 
Everyone else has a perfect family tied up in a bow, and you don't. That's a lie of the enemy. Especially when you're in church. Like, oh, look at them. They're such a perfect couple. Look at them. They're such a perfect family. Like I said, no one here is perfect. But because of Jesus and what he has done with us, we learn to love each other more. We learn to have joy in, even in our hardest circumstance. We learn to have peace even in the darkest hours. We learn to be how Jesus loves us. We develop the character of Christ. Do not get on the wheel of guilt or the cycle of guilt. You fail because you, you yielded to your temptation. Then you feel the guilt and now the enemy is on you, condemning you. And because you are being condemned, you continue to fail. And you continue to have guilt. And the condemn, condemnation piles on and on and on. Get off of that wheel. You are not a hamster. All right? It seems as though you can never get anything right and everyone in, else in church or in, life can, in the life group can do it, but I can't. Don't believe that lie. It says in the Word of God in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 10, two people are better off than one for they can help each other, what? Succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real, what? Trouble. Trouble. You're in trouble. If you keep the church at bay, if you keep the life group at bay, if you keep those who try to pray over you, who try to mentor you, who try to love on you away, you will fall into trouble. It's not if we will be tempted, it's when we get tempted. It's a surety. But just as sure as the temptation will be there, just as sure as the enemy will entice you to sin, Jesus is there. To give you a way out. Don't think that you can do this just by yourself. That's being prideful. You need God and someone else who, can, who you can trust. You need an accountability partner. Here we are developing the ideas, the big ideas. Where we have mentorship. We have partnership. We have accountability. As we continue to develop that, all of you will have a part in it. All of you would be under someone or with someone helping you grow. Just like what my brother said here. He loves Oasis because we share the love of God. Because we're here for each other. We're not just a church, we're a family. James chapter 5 Verse 16 says, confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. There is healing in the truth. If you're thinking you're the only one going through that particular situation, if you think you're the only one going through that particular temptation, don't. Someone here has gone through it like you. And they succeeded so that his name will be glorified, so that he can guide you or she can guide you through that same situation that you're in right now. That's why they have light boys, lighthouses. When you're, if you're a ship going through a dense fog, there's uncertainty. Going through trouble, there's uncertainty. Going through the darkness, there's uncertainty. But that light, that lighthouse, is Jesus shining through each and every one of you helping you to get to where you need to be safely and securely. Confessing your sin is not saying that you have failed, but admitting that you need God. You may be struggling with something in your life and you want out. You just don't know how. Confess it to God. Seek help from your fellow believer and apply the five strategies that we talked about today. From sharing each other's burden and pain and trials, it keeps you moving forward and mature in your faith. Yes, you may stumble and fall, but God will say, good job, my faithful servant. You will succeed. You will get through 
with the help of your brothers and sisters in Christ. But first, you have to get on the cycle of restoration. Admit that you have sinned. Accept Jesus in your life and advance in your faith walk with the help of an accountability partner. Admit that, you have, that there is something wrong. Accept the help that is available to you in advancing your faith in, together with your accountability partner. The five strategies. Identify your pattern of temptation. Shield your heart. Be alert and pray. Redirect your thoughts and belong in your church and your life group. Let me close with this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. Amen? He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can what? You can endure. You can endure. In a culture filled with moral depravity, a culture filled with sin-inducing pressures, Paul encouraged the Corinthians about temptation. That was thousands of years ago, and it's still true today. Just as he is encouraging us today, Paul is saying, the Apostle Paul is saying that temptations happen to everyone. So don't feel like you've been singled out. Others have resisted temptation, so you can too. Any temptation that can be resisted uh, can be resisted because God will show you a way out. The question is, do you want out? Do you? Amen. 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 You have to want it and you have to act on that too. God will aid you in resisting temptation by helping you recognize those people and situations that give you trouble. Run from anything that you know is wrong. Choose to do only what is right. Pray for God's help. And seek friends who love God and can offer help when you are tempted. Like I said earlier, we are not perfect people. We are just people made perfect in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give glory to God. As the worship team comes, um, instrumentalists, let's all stand. If you are listening online, thank you so much for being with us today. As we listen and, and heard what God has for us, this is your day. God is saying that you are done with what you have been doing. But now is the time that you let go of those old things. Now is the time that this suffering, this temptation, this desire, this sin will stop. Now is the time when I will bring healing into your life, into your relationships, into your situations. If that is you today and you want this promise of Jesus what He can do in your life, just like the testimonies that we heard today, I invite you to say this prayer with me. If you're already a believer, but you still want victory, you're saying, yes, Lord, I want to take and I want to choose that path away from this sin, say this prayer with me. All together here in this room and even those who are listening, say, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I know I, have, I am wrong. And I thank you for dying on the cross, for taking of my sin on it, and restoring me into the fullness of God's glory. From this day forward, I accept and declare that Jesus is my Lord and Savior that He lives in my heart and I am His child from now on. I, I receive this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's give glory to God.